Today we are going to finish the introduction of this chapter. Yesterday we finished reading about Jana. Today we are going to continue with a further development. What's after Jana? From the fourth Jana, three alternative lines of further development become possible. In a number of texts outside the stop passage on the gradual training, the Buddha mentions four meditative states that continue the mental unification established by the jhanas. These states described as the liberations that are peaceful and formless are further refinements of concentration distinguished from the jhanas by their transcendence of the subtle of the subtle mental image that serves as the object in the jhanas they are named the base of infinity space of space the base of the infinity of consciousness, the base of nothingness, and the base of neither perception nor non-perception. Hmm. So after the fourth jhana, there are another four meditative stages that continue the mental unification established by the jhanas. Hmm. Described as liberations that are peaceful and formless. And they are further refinements of concentrations. And these are the names accordingly. Let me highlight infinity, the base of the infinity of space, infinity of consciousness, nothingness. And the last one the base of neither perception nor non-perception. That is the first line of development. Sister Saiken, would you like to continue? A second line of development is the acquisition of supernormal knowledge. The Buddha frequently refers to a set of six types which come to be called the six kinds of direct knowledge, Chalabina. The last of this, the knowledge of the destruction of the taints, is supramandate or world transcendent, and thus marks the culmination of the third line of development. But the other five are all mundane, products of the extraordinarily powerful mental concentration achieved in the fourth jhana. The supernormal powers, the divine year, the ability to read the mind of others, the recollection of past lives, and the knowledge of the passing away and rebirth of beings. See text 8, section 4. Thank you. Thanks, Sister Saken. This is the second line of development after jhana, after the four jhanas, the acquisition of supernormal knowledge. This supernormal knowledge, there are six types. It's also called the six kinds of direct knowledge. Let me highlight this. Chalabinia. The last of these six types is the knowledge of the destruction of the taints. But and the other five are all mundane. Only the last one is super mundane. What are the other five? Supernormal powers, divine ear, ability to read the minds of others, recollection of past lives. And the last of the five, the knowledge of the passing away and rebirth of beings.
when we read the sutta, we we often see passage about rebirth, but that one is only knowledge through what the Buddha described. But this one, when you develop it, you are able to see it for yourselves. Yeah. This is where your faith in the Buddha, in what the Buddha describes, becomes confidence, becomes your own knowledge. And all doubts are removed about rebirth, at least. Okay, Sister Shomi, would you like to continue? The jhanas and the former attainments by themselves do not issue in enlightenment and liberation. Though lofty and peaceful, they can only silence the deformments that sustain the rebound of rebirths but cannot eradicate them. To uproot, to uproot the defilements at the most fundamental level and thereby arrive at enlightenment and liberation, the meditative process must be directed to a third mind of development. This is the contemplation of things as they really are, which results in the increasingly deeper insights into the nature of existence and culminates in the final goal the attainment of arahanship. Thanks, Sister Shami. Even though it's very lofty and peaceful, here we could already mention jhanas and formless attainments, not enough to reach liberations. So how how to reach liberation exactly? We should contemplate things as they really are, direct our our mind to the contemplation of the truth. And then culminates in the final goal, the attainment of arahanship. This uh, I think would you like to continue? This line of development is one of the Buddha is the one the Buddha pursues in the passage on the gradual training. He prefaces it with description of two of the direct knowledge, the recollection of past lives and the knowledge of the passing away and rebirth of beings. The three together figure prominently in the Buddha's own enlightenment, as we saw in text 2, 3.2, and are collectively called the three true knowledges, Devija, Although the first two are not essential to the realization of arahanship, the Buddha probably includes them here because they, re they reveal the truly vast and profound dimensions of sufferings in samsara, thereby preparing the mind for the penetration of the four noble truths by which that suffering is diagnosed and surmounted. Thanks, Sister Akim. Okay, the we could only mention here the third line of development is the one the Buddha pursues in the passage on the gradual training. The Buddha starts with two of the direct knowledge, the recollection of past lives, and knowledge of the passing away and rebirth of beings. Okay, because only mentioned these two, yeah, the recollection of past lives. Yeah. So here the difference is the recollection of past lives is his own past lives. And knowledge of the passing away and rebirth of beings is uh, about others and yeah, other beings. So the first two are not essential for enlightenment, but the last one, the third one, the third line of development, the contemplation of things as they really are. Let's see. are the one that uh, leads us to enlightenment, but the Buddha includes these two 
because they reveal the truly fast and profound damage of suffering in samsara. And this is illustrated very well in the last two suttas that we read in the previous chapter, the stream of tears and the stream of blood and how the amount of tears and bloods we have accumulated over the samsara are more than the four great oceans. And having this knowledge is preparing us, preparing the mind for the penetra penetration of the four noble truths. Yes, Sister Billy, would you like to continue? The passage on the gradual training does not explicitly show the process of contemplation by which the med meditator develops insight. The whole process is only implied by the mention of its final fruit called the knowledge of the destruction of the teens. Oops. Asawaka Yanyana the the asawas or taints are a classification of defilements considered in their role of sustaining the forward movements of the process of birth and death. The commentaries derive the word from a root, su, meaning to flow. Scholars differ as to whether the flow implied by the prefix a is inward or outward. outward. Hence, some have rendered it as influxes or influences, others as outflows or affluence. The stock passage in the suttas indicates the term's real significance independently of etymology when it describes the asawas as states that defile, bring renewal of existence, give trouble, ripen in suffering, and lead to future birth, aging, and death. Majjhima Nikaya 36, 47, I 250. Thus, other translators, bypassing the literal meaning, have rendered it cankers, corruptions, or taints. The three taints mentioned in the Nikayas are respectively synonyms for craving for sensual pleasures, craving for existence, and ignorance. When the disciple's mind is liberated from the teens by the completion of the path of Arahanship, he reveals his newly won freedom and roars his lion's roar. Birth is destroyed. Its spiritual life has been lived. What had been done has been done. There is no more coming back to any state of being. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu. Thanks, Sister Billy. This is a very... The common passage you will encounter in the when you read the suttas. This last paragraph talks about pains, and Bhikkhu explains about pains. These translations, outflows, you will encounter this uh, if you watch the Dharma talk. On the Ajahn Brahm, Ajahn Brahmani sites, they like to use this word, outflow. These taints are categorized in the tree. And there are three taints mentioned in the Nikayas craving for sensual pleasure, craving for existence, and ignorance. In 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 a very early Majima Nikaya, either one or two, the sutta itself. Explain everything about just about taints. We can take you can take a look at the Majima Nikai if you like to find out more. With that, we have finished the introduction of this chapter, and we have a little bit more time. Maybe we can start to read the sutta a little bit. Sister Chai Kwan, would you like to read? Chapter 7, The Path to Liberation Section 1 Why does one enter the path? The arrow of birth 
aging and death. Thus have I heard on one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Sawati in Geta's Grove, Anata Pintika's Park. Then, when the Venerable Malunka Putta was alone in meditation, the following thought arose in his mind. These speculative views have been left undeclared by the Blessed One, set aside and rejected by him. Namely, the world is eternal and the world is not eternal. The world is <clears throat> finite and the world is infinite. The soul is the same as the body and the soul is the one thing and the body another. And after death, a Tathagata exists. And after death, a Tathagata does not exist. And after death, a Tathagata both exists and does not exist. And after death, a Tathagata neither exists nor does not exist. The Blessed One does not declare this to me, and I do not approve of and accept this fact. So I shall go to the Blessed One and ask him the meaning of this. If he declares to me either the world is eternal or after death a Tathagata neither exists nor does not exist, then I will lead the spiritual life under him. If he does not declare this to me, then I will abandon the training and return to the lower life. Thank you. Thanks, Sister Chaitan. Footnotes number one. Oh, very long footnotes. <laughs> Among these ten views, those that entertain ideas about the world, Loka, are also implicitly entertaining similar ideas about the self, Atta. Thus, the first pair is the antithesis of eternalism and annihilationism. The view that the soul is the same as the body is materialism, a type of annihilationism. The view that the soul and the body are different is eternalism. Why is it eternalism? Because when you separate the soul and the body, you would think that when the body, you know, with the breakup of the body with death, the soul will continue <laughs> to exist eternally. This is why. This is why it's the view of eternalism. The view that the Tathagata, a liberated person, exists after death is eternalism. The view that he does not exist after death is annihilationism. So we are going back and forth between these two views. The view that he both exists and does not exist is a syncretic doctrine combining features of annihilationism uh, eternalism and annihilationism. The view that he neither exists nor does not exist is skepticism or agnosticism, which denies that we can determine his condition after death. All these views from the Buddhist perspective presuppose that the Tathagata presently exists as a self they thus begin with an already erroneous premise and differ only in so far as they posit the fate of the self in different ways. <laughs> this would note is a little bit technical, but the point is here in the last line, uh, in the last line, in the first line, that all these questions already have an erroneous, has a wrong uh, premise that there is a self. Okay, take a look. Okay, the last one is <laughs> pretty funny. So, did this venerable actually <laughs> wanted to threaten the Buddha? If the Buddha does not answer me, I would abandon the monastic life and I would return to the household life. Okay. Any questions or comments?
If not, would Sister Shaw may like to do the dedication? Thank Sister Shami, till we meet again, may we be guided by the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Have a thinless Wednesday ahead. Okay, we can say apologies everyone, I have a call to take more. Very busy, man, a call at 8 a.m. Power. <laughs> Thanks everyone, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.